What's going on guys? It's been a while, right? I hope you're excited for a new video today because it's probably about time I've uploaded one. Now, if you're wondering what I'm gonna be doing today, it's gonna to be a prop from a TV series and that TV series is gonna be Arcane. I really enjoyed watching the series and there were a ton of cool things in it that I would have liked to make. But one of the things that was really exciting for me was the hex core. Now, this is basically a magical stone that sits inside of a load of runes. And when you align the runes correctly, it creates magic. In the TV series, this thing looks and functions very similarly to a Rubik's cube. And that got me thinking, I like Rubik's cubes. I like Arcane, why not mix the two together? So I created this thing. Now this looks exactly like the hex core from Arcane and I'm pretty proud of how it's turned out. Now the very key component of this is it actually functions like the hex core from Arcane too. Every single face twists exactly like it was in the TV show. And I gotta say, I'm incredibly impressed with the results. I feel like I've outdone myself this time. The mechanism of this thing is quite complicated and it took me quite a while to get it perfect. So in this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a different format. It's gonna start out with some CAD and CAM kind of stuff going into Fusion and doing a little bit of a breakdown of how something like this was even designed. Now, if you're not too interested in Cal and Cam, not many people are, you can skip ahead. I'll put some timestamps down below and yeah, you can see where you want to go from there. Now, one final thing before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to Martin Stanger, who was the first person to buy me a coffee through my website. Thanks very much for that. That money has gone towards helping with this channel. And if you guys want to support the channel too, you can do that down below. You'll see the website down there. With that shameless self-promotion out of the way, let's get started. I thought I'd do things a little bit differently today and give a bit of an overview of what I'm actually doing on Fusion. I'm not going to show everything that I'm doing, but I'll probably stop at some of the more notable uh, points and explain what's actually going on. The first thing I'm going to do is make one of the pyramid shapes. So that's the first bit out of the way. It took me a little while to get there. Basically what I did was create a pyramid shape on two faces of the square and then extrude those out and I also made like a square on the top there and extrude that down. I think the next thing to do would be make some runes to go on the faces of these. Okay, and that's our runes. So if you're wondering how I got those, um, basic breakdown is I got an image online, then put it into Illustrator, put the contrast really, really high up, did a color select, which then allowed me to select just the runes and not the background, created a new blank layer, did a black fill on that layer, which gave me just a black outline of what the runes look like, exported that as a PNG, and then put that into Illustrator and did image trace. And image trace just gives me vectorized versions of the black layer that I had. That took a little bit longer than expected, but basically what I've just done there is aligned all the runes up with uh, like the pyramid shapes. Now we can save these as SVGs and import them into Fusion and use them to extrude out those runes on the actual pyramids. issues there. For some reason, whenever I export from Illustrator as an SVG and pull it into Fusion, it scales it down by like 1.33 recurring. If someone knows how to fix that, please let me know in the comments. Um, that would be really helpful. But yeah, we've got the runes put on the faces of the pyramid now. The next thing will be to extrude those runes out through the bottom. I know there are a lot more decorative pieces on here. I'm going to ignore those just for the time being because I want to make sure that this is all going to work first and do like a really simple um, test piece. Then when that's done, I can work on some of the finer details for the like final piece. The internal cubes that we're going to be using are going to have some like magnets and stuff in them. I think it's probably best that we work on that part now. Hey guys, post-production Josh here, and I'll be honest with you, this is about the point where I started going off on a tangent with trigonometry and geometry. No pun intended, by the way. Anyway, I stopped talking to the camera too much during this part, and it didn't really make for very good viewing. So, I'm just going to explain roughly what was going on. I basically put together a really simple Rubik's Cube using loads of different cubes. They would have been connected by magnets, and the magnets would have been pretty much the only thing holding the pieces together. Now, this worked in theory, and I did print out a few test pieces and put them together, and yeah, it worked okay but I wasn't really blown away by it. The magnets didn't seem to have quite enough strength to hold things together properly, and whilst it was okay, I thought I could do better. So I ended up redesigning the entire mechanism for the cube. 
I didn't end up recording this process because, again, I was kind of winging it and didn't entirely know what direction it was going to take. I took a lot of inspiration from how actual Rubik's Cubes are made, and while the mechanism is fairly similar, it's also got very distinct differences. I've also got to give a big shout out to Maker's Muse, and if you're watching me, you've probably already heard of him. He did a few videos a while back where he designed his own Rubik's Cubes and his own mechanism for those Rubik's Cubes, and I took a lot of inspiration from him. He also went as far as to create some templates that you could lay over an existing shape and cut out the internal mechanism of a Rubik's Cube, which I thought was a really cool idea, and if I had more time for this, I'd probably give that a go myself. With that said, I didn't use one of these templates myself, I ended up designing the mechanism from scratch, and I'm really proud of the results, and you should be able to see roughly how things work as we move forward. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, this thing looks incredible. I mean, look at that. I'm actually seriously impressed with myself here. Um, this is probably one of the most complicated looking things that I've ever designed on Fusion. I say complicated looking, I have designed complicated -er, more complicated. So finally got these things off the printer and I gotta say this is doing wonders for my OCD. These are the center caps, they're the ones that are gonna have like the bolts going through them. We've then got the corner pieces which are here. Now these are kind of tricky to print um, mainly because there's a sphere like being built up. You can kind of see just in like the gap there there's some like deformity to the sphere. I don't think that's gonna be too big an issue because it's not gonna like collide with anything whilst it's all moving about. We've got the edge pieces which are these ones here. These have come out really well. We've got the core here that's looking pretty good we've got the tiles they look fine that's the uh, the rooms like the caps and I'm really impressed with these they're not the greatest quality you can see like there's some string and uh, small issues there but I think overall these things look absolutely brilliant so we need to add these magnets in all the holes um, that's gonna be fairly complicated matching up all the polarities or at least I thought so at first, then I realized there's a bit of a trick that you can do to do this. So if we start with all the corner pieces, we can put these in one by one, all in the same orientation. And then if we do that for every single one of these things, then we just have to take these later put a magnet in there and make sure they match up. That's going to make it much easier to put this thing together. After that, um, we'll have to deal with these centerpieces here. But yeah, um, I think this is going to be a fairly straightforward way to get them all in there correctly. So now we've got to put the magnets in these two opposing pieces. This is the center and this is an edge. And these um, shouldn't really ever interact with any other magnets on the side of this one, but they may interact with the magnets on the corner pieces. That's because when you uh, when you have the cube together, the corner piece is gonna be up here like so. It could turn like so. And if these magnets come into contact with each other, they'll end up snapping. And we don't necessarily want that. So I want these ones to oppose these magnets um, to do that obviously we can check the orientation by just snapping on onto here we know that that would be the attracting orientation so if I take this off and flip it around that's going to be the repelling orientation and without messing up the orientation of that stack there I'm going to put a bit of glue into the first hole on this and there we go that's going to be our reference piece part to do um, is we can take one of these center pieces and we need to match those magnets up with magnets that go in these holes on the edge pieces. I think technically you would be able to use this as is. It might not be the strongest Rubik's Cube going, but since uh, everything would hold together with the magnets, you could technically get away with using this without a core in it. Oh, this is actually incredibly satisfying. Wow, okay, very nice. Does it turn? It does. The opposing magnets actually seem to be doing quite a good job of keeping it moving. So, um, next step, we can literally just take it like that and drop the core into the middle. Wow, that looks great. 
And now, take bolts and thread those in from each side. This is uh, spinning way better than I uh, could have expected it would. So next up is to actually get these parts on here. But before that, I need to paint them all. Now, I spent quite a while figuring out how I was going to paint these things, and I thought about just using like a regular paintbrush for a while, but that seemed quite finicky, and I don't really think I have the accuracy to do something like that. What I ended up coming up with in the end was these things. What, what, what do they call this thing? They're calling it a paint marker pen. Uh, extra fine point. I mean, it's just full of paint and yeah, it floods the stuff out when you're drawing with it. This seemed like a really great idea and pretty cheap as well. So this is what we're going to be using. Now, while the pen is quite accurate, there are a few areas where the paint has like seeped through some of the layer lines, and to clean that up, I'm going to be using a Q-tip and just some iceberg alcohol. After painting, I've made a quick change. So if you take a look at this, this is one of the existing centerpieces. You can see it's got the magnets throughout the side and nothing really to secure one of the pyramids on the top. I mean, I've got this cut out and one of the pyramids does have like a circle thing it can push in, but it's loose and I don't know, it just didn't seem ideal to me. I kind of saw myself having to use super glue and that would lose me access to the screws that go through this thing. To fix that, I've actually reprinted these with a, another hole for magnet there and reprinted the pyramids as well with a matching one. So now we can put magnets in both of them and these will snap together and stay in place, but then also be removable when I need them to be removable. Just gonna glue these up now. Okay, they're a bit tighter. Okay, these top ones are quite tight. I'll try and make those a little bit bigger for the uh, 3D printed files if you guys ever decide to make one of these. Um, you may just have to use a bit of pressure if I end up forgetting to do that though. And the centerpiece. And that works pretty well. The magnets aren't crazy strong, but it's just enough to keep it on there and not be too loose. Uh, not going to be going too crazy with this thing, but yeah, it's, it's good enough for me. And it can be removed easy enough as well. Okay, spent a lot of while taking the cube apart and putting it back together with the new centerpieces inside. There we go. And uh, they could be better. Maybe I'll modify the model so it can accept two magnets instead of just one, but I'm happy enough with this for the time being. Next step is attaching these pieces. So these ones aren't going to need to come off. I'm just going to use super glue to uh, put those in place. And now with as many of those pyramids added as I can add at the minute, uh, it's time to add some of these pieces. So the little triangle bits, and they're gonna slot on in each of the diagonal sections. Okay, so the camera died halfway through that, but you can see I've got the triangle tiles on now, and that means it's time to add on some of these pyramid pieces. Now, these are probably gonna be one of the more tricky pieces, just because the tolerances aren't crazy tight. Um, I'm thinking probably just a dab of glue on the very top of the pyramid and then just slot these things on top like so. Hopefully that's going to be enough. And with those final pieces glued together, that's everything done. I'm really impressed with this thing. I mean, just look at it. It actually functions just like it does in the TV show, and I couldn't be happier. Now, one thing I considered for a while is adding color to all the different runes on here. 
That way you could have different faces on the hex core and be able to solve it just like a real Rubik's Cube. I decided against that in the end though because I wanted this to look exactly like it does in a TV show. But you could very easily do that with some paint if you wanted to. It'd just be a case of painting each individual face. One thing to bear in mind is that instead of having six sides like a traditional Rubik's Cube, this thing has an additional eight sides because of all the corners or lack of corners, I guess. That means you'll have to come up with some additional colours to use on these corners. Maybe different shades of pink, blue, green and yellow to match the TV show? I don't know, just a thought. Anyway guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the video today and I can't wait to see you in the next one.